Ms. Preston, and hello and good evening everyone. It's lovely to see such a full room on such an interesting topic. New Labour wasn't created as a faction, but as a philosophy, a mindset striving for improvements in social justice and equalising access to opportunity by trying to level the playing field. It was commitment to this philosophy, this vision that saw a coordinated implementation of policies that sought to open up those opportunities and social mobility. New Labour was about pragmatism, ideas and change. This philosophy also saw, incidentally, a three-term Labour government, something that we should be very proud of if we want to implement our socialist policies. When people talk about New Labour now, it is referred to as though it's a faction a way of identifying or boxing members on the Labour's um, political spectrum. But actually, when talking about New Labour, it needs to be put into the context of what it did for people, for our communities and for our society. It was under New Labour that my family was given the chance to change their situation and is part of the reason that I'm stood here now. My mum and dad both came from working class families who, although aspirational for themselves and their children, were limited by their background and, and also the opportunities that they were hindered. My mum, who desperately wanted to train to be a teacher, had to leave school at 16 because despite her academic potential, her parents couldn't afford it with three other children. They did refuse to send her into the same um, industries and jobs that they had done and managed to ensure that she had a chance of something better through secretarial college in the city. A big change. My father managed to work his way up into management without a degree through hard work and aspiration. Something that actually now we can't do if you try to get through industry without a degree. Now, of course, these were opportunities far greater than their own parents had known. New Labour would facilitate a level of social mobility that my parents and theirs would never have envisaged then. New Labour changed my family's circumstances, meant I was raised to believe that as long as I work hard at school, the world is my oyster. <coughs> I was raised to assume I would aim for university, would enter a fulfilling career, even own a home at some point. My granddad had cried when my parents bought their first home, something far out of reach for much of his working life. Yet the opportunities made available under New Labour meant my background was far different. New Labour as a philosophy saw the implementation of domestic policies that made significant gains in equalising access to opportunity. Social policies like Sure Start facilitated early intervention, community cohesion, and removed the limitations of your socio-economic background. I worked in the Sure Start Centre during my training as a speech and language therapist. And I'll never forget seeing how, as a community-centred, multi-agency, early help intervention, managed to break down the barriers between professional and parents and neighbour and neighbour. I distinctly recall two women in particular. Each had brought along their two little boys, aged about three, and they were both very worried about their progress. One mother was from a middle class background and the other was a mother struggling on benefits and who was looking for a job. Both had very different experiences of their local community, and they lived streets apart. But by the end of that session, they bonded over the concerns that they had for their child and their mutual anxieties, and that led to a relationship that progressed while they entered the Sure Start scheme. While it is true that achievements in educational reform, community cohesion, child poverty, to name just a few, have been subsequently undermined. That policy strategy, combined with the ability to communicate it effectively, made New Labour's vision incredibly effective. So, is New Labour dead? New Labour succeeded where many other Labour philosophies, strategies, and even governments have failed. Its efforts for reform and the change it sought to make, champion, championing aspiration, 
something that we as human beings are naturally inclined to do. To aspire to be better, to do better, to want better for ourselves and our families. New Labour succeeded not only in recognising that, but in implementing policies that would aim to make people's aspirations a reality. New Labour as a philosophy, as a policy strategy, is part of the Labour Party. It aimed to deliver what, in practical terms, the Labour Party was formed to do. To facilitate access to opportunity, regardless of your background, or the background that you were born into. To create a society that is fairer and more equal. And to improve the life chances of everyone. With this in mind, New Labour represents a way in which we can pragmatically deliver this. And what we have learned from it means it remains very much alive. Its pragmatism and its focus on ideas means it still has a lot to offer our party. And I would ask you all to consider very, very firmly that New Labour is not dead. It is an idea and a pragmatism that remains part of our political movement. Thank you very much.